This is Andrew Robles with the end. is dead. Now really isn't a beginning, it's an end, and in fact, it's the definition of the end. I thought that it was going to be my end too. As a little girl, I used to have nightmares that my father died and no one would tell me. I would see him blast off in a rocket ship and knew that was the last time I would see him, that he was dead but no one was willing to admit to that little girl that was tied so tight to her father that he was gone, gone forever, that he had died. In reality, I was there when my father was dying. I watched as he deteriorated over the course of 18 days in the ICU. I watched my actual nightmare come to pass. And it was devastating. It is very obviously still devastating. My father was my world for 33 years. Sure, we had our fights and our tensions. We were codependent. <laughs> we weren't perfect. But I always knew that I was loved. I knew that I was beautiful and capable and strong and smart and powerful. My dad gave me those gifts. In his eyes, I was his wonderful little girl, and he was always so proud of me. When you have that, you feel like you can just conquer the world. And then with the loss of that, it felt like the world had conquered me. I expected to be so consumed with grief that I would eventually choose not to live anymore either. I thought this would be my end as well. But instead, I got mad. I got cynical and disgusted, and I suddenly had no fear. It made me careless and willing to make decisions at a time I should not be making decisions. <laughs> I also realized that now I was searching for a replacement. I didn't have any male, relative, or friend, or sexual partner that I could depend on in the same way. I needed to know that there were still men out there in the world that could love me. I decided to try online dating. Uh -oh. <laughs> Now, I am old enough that online dating was not a thing when I was growing up. It was not a cultural norm like it is now. It was scary. Online dating to me was essentially a big pool of killers and serial rapists who all wanted to take advantage of poor, lonely, single women desperate enough to date someone who could potentially have a mugshot and know how to make hooch in a toilet. <laughs> that wasn't gonna stop me. If I met one of these strangers and they decided to kill me, it wasn't gonna be the worst thing that ever happened to me. So I created a profile. I answered ridiculous questions. Are you willing to date someone with children? How often do you brush your teeth? If you turn a left-handed glove inside out, it fits your left hand or your right hand. Okay. Then I, scroll, I was free to scroll through men in my area. And some in the town my brother lives in. And maybe a few in the town my mom lives in. Because a bigger dating pool can't be a bad thing, right? Well, I browsed profiles. I hearted pictures. I swiped left and very rarely swiped right. That's the good one. <laughs> I sent messages and texts. I had a few phone calls and I met up with one or two. I even gave in and slept with one. None of this made me feel better. None of this was what I actually wanted. Then I decided to give the math a chance. This dating app I was on had a compatibility algorithm and it compared my responses to the ridiculous questions with different men's responses. 
it calculated that my highest match was 94% compatible. I figured the algorithm deserved a chance, so I messaged a man I wasn't automatically attracted to. We messaged back and forth a while, and then he asked if I wanted to meet. Okay. We went and got coffee. We talked, and we talked. He wasn't my usual type, but after that first meeting, I knew I wanted him around. He'd be a good friend. We went on some dates. He never touched me. No hand holding, not even accidentally brushing up against me. We went on more dates, and then one night, he surprised me with the world's most awkward, embarrassing first kiss. That is a whole different story for another one of these nights. It was, it was bad. We were going to be great friends. <laughs> I decided I needed to end this romantic relationship before it went any farther, even though this meant the end of a friendship that I actually wanted. It was yet another ending in my life. Well, the night I was going to tell him, he greeted me with a huge smile on his face. He was so happy to see me. I was in trouble. <laughs> Couldn't break his heart that night. I knew what a commodity happiness was, and I could not take that away from him. I decided to make a date for the breakup for another time. <laughs> well, that time came, and as I was about to tell him, I realized I couldn't. I thought, well, if you don't tell him now, you won't tell him at all. You'll be stuck with him. It's now or never. And then I realized I wouldn't really be stuck with him. I really did want him in my life. I chose never. He was smart. He was kind and gentle. He was quiet and still. He had a lot of qualities that my dad had. He had a lot of qualities that a good man has. So I decided to pull every ounce of affection and caring I could find left in my broken heart and present it to him. Later that same night, he asked me how I would introduce him to my friends. I didn't understand. By your name? <laughs> I asked. <laughs> oh. I waited. And he didn't clear anything, clarify anything, so I said, how would you introduce me? Was well, my girlfriend. Oh, shit. <laughs> your girlfriend. <laughs> you think I'm your girlfriend, aren't you? I had just been on this roller coaster deciding if I should end things, and he thought we were on the merry-go-round. <laughs> Do you want me to be your girlfriend? I think maybe I was asking this of myself, really, more than I was asking him. Well, five months have passed since that conversation, and now I'm in love. More in love than ever before in a way that I can feel spread through my body and begin to mend the pieces of my broken heart. Now I know that eight months ago, I got a new beginning when I thought I only 